Y... Hello and welcome to the Virtual Film Company studio here on Spatial.io. We're here every two weeks bringing you the latest in technology news. Our focus over the last couple of months has been AI. And today we're going to continue to talk about developments in AI, including SEMA, Rock, and a whole bunch of other interesting developments. Things seem to be changing on a daily basis, and it's a really exciting field to be in. So let me hand it over to Chris, who's going to elaborate more on today's topics. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thanks, John. You're absolutely right. It's <laughs> um, I call this show the AI paper flood because really it's every day you get new information. And just to, to let you see um, how much that is, I checked on a website called um, Artificial Intelligence Authors, A-R-X-I-F, Arxiv. And there all the new papers are basically um, collected. And for each week, you can search for the papers and it will show you the amount. And when you check for uh, several single days, like Friday 15th of March, we have um, 115 entries just that day. And we have on Wednesday, the 20th of March, we have 105 entries of papers already. So every day, hundreds, sometimes hundreds of papers are coming in. So it's a real flood of papers, in my opinion. And it is um, showing us how extremely, let's say, hot this topic is. So there are tons of researchers out there bringing new models, new ideas. And like every week in the last half a year, probably at least, um, Again, today, we, we picked some one of those I, new models and, and uh, developments, and we will talk about that, just to give you a hint what's happening there. And we have some topics, and let's go to the first one. We don't want to waste time. So we can talk about a topic called SEMA. SEMA is a, a new development from our friends, let's say, from Google Research. And, and what does SEMA do? SEMA is basically an AI model and it learned to play 3D open world games. So they trained that AI model on how to play and understand 3D open world games like um, there, there are so many of them in the end, right? Uh, where you can walk around, interact with other players, interact with um, AIs, for example, fulfill challenges and quests and so on and so on. And those models are also able to play these games so they can give the input. And the more important thing, in my opinion, is that they do understand the environment. And I think this is somehow a game changer. Think about if you are creating a new game and you would need something like an administrator for your game that will check that all the players are doing nothing harmful, um, not posting any harmful content or whatever. Wouldn't it be great to have an AI model that knows how the game is played and they can it can control the content. So a lot of people will say, yeah. oh my goodness, that's horrible. But on the other no, hand, that's amazing. Come handy. I think it's amazing uh, in the sense that uh, anybody who's been over to VR chat, you know, I think that there's some rooms that they would love to where, uh, you know, things aren't tolerated. You know, if you want to go to a space, there's spaces for that. But uh, to be able to have parameters of what you can do. And they could also be helpful, too, and be an assistant if you needed a question answered or whatnot, and they know everything really well. Uh, I mean, there there's so many benefits to this. I definitely, it's amazing. 
Yeah, but I think, you know, we need to be a little cognizant. I think, you know, AI can definitely be used for moderation, for security, for all kinds of things. We are running into issues with AI moderation already as it goes, you know, both with LLMs and image generators where prompts are looked at by AI and often they don't understand the context of the prompt. So, you know, service and it gets to the point where it becomes really annoying. And yeah, it's getting better, but, you know, that's something, I mean, all of this stuff's evolving. To me, the exciting thing about SEMA is that it now has 600 basic skills, right? So it can turn yep. left, turn forward, climb the ladder, you know, look at the map, whatever. It's really, in my opinion, going to expand the world of filmmaking, animation, where all of a sudden you're going to be able to, using natural language, instruct these. And, you know, yesterday I was actually talking to Chris. I mean, we call these we used to call these characters non-playing characters, right? NPCs, yeah. With AI, are they still going to be non-playing, or are they going to be part of the mm. game? I think that's the very, well, very interesting, interesting thing to me is uh, them becoming part of the game and having that. Yeah, it's like well, you, you don't know what's going to happen next because um, there's AI more mystery. I the story. No, that's that's definitely one of the most important points in my opinion because of the fact that this model is understanding the environment the world and probably the meaning of pictures that are getting in there and when we think about these huge um yeah unlimited worlds might be decentral land as well connected to uh cryptocurrency and and everything when people are bringing in user-generated content images uh paintings whatever those models will be able to understand what's on those paintings. They will be able to discuss with you if you want to. So stuff like that. It's it's crazy when you think about storylines, right? We we know these old games where you were going to quests and then you had the the goldsmith you have to go to. And then you can ask this character three questions you can choose from. Now you can have a, a discussion and you can show him a picture maybe inside of the game. Like, hey, what do you see here? Do you think this is a, a hint to the next quest or whatever? There's so many new possibilities with those integrated models that do understand these environments where they are basically act in. So it's it's really, in my opinion, really amazing. Well, the yeah. other so how go ahead, Eric. How how long until we have somebody who can be an assistant here at the virtual film company. How long till we're going to be able to hire somebody here? Eric, we have John. <laughs> well, the you know the answer to that is actually now ultimately we need and we still don't have this. Extended version of have, you know, web, whatever one wants to call it, where everything is supposed to be interconnected and yet distributed, you know, it's not the, you know, I think the answer to your question is when certain, for example, here we are on spatial, and I've been digging into spatial again, interesting additions that can add C++, but, um, it's still its own little world and it has its rules and whether it allows a call to an outside agent or not debatable you know that would be a security issue possibly and so you know i think until we have an open metaverse standards like you know, That's what we need. And we've been talking about this for years. And back to Chris. 
Um, yeah, you so, were breaking up a little bit, John. So, he uh, was breaking up a little bit. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, for sure, there are always issues. And yeah, it. I mean, think about if there are games where uh, people are mining, you know, you know, those games where you have to go to quests or do some work, um, get gold, collect things, whatever. And now other people would say, okay, I'm, I'm taking an AI model doing oh all my that gosh. stuff. Let them and collect everything that. and then they just play like it's working all night collecting and mining for the person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we had no, those no, stuff no, already. No, no. You know, I mean, I, I would hope that there's AI that picks up on doing that, bans them from. That's a total unfair advantage, in my opinion. Sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. But how would you like to control if someone is sitting on his controller, Xbox controller, or PC, whatever, mouse, and not that there is a, a model on the other side? Because SEMA is just taking the image, the image from the game. You could you could pipe that in just from your output from your PC, whatever. I mean. There are always possibilities to use things in a good way or a bad way, uh, but I think we have to go to the next topic again. But it's it's really interesting where this is going to. In closing, with how fast technology is moving, I just would love for you guys both to estimate how long it's going to be before we're going to be able to actually have these things that we'll be able to work with and implement. Hard to say. I, Those Google research papers uh, might be next year, but it might take longer. Sora is supposed to come out. Said, so yeah, you know, Google. The problem with many of these companies is they come up with these things, you know, and then they look at what it's going to cost. You know, I mean, uh, you know, and that's something we've talked about. You know, if one's interested, we do have a YouTube channel at the film company, and you know, we've talked about Sora, which I just mentioned, amazing video generation program is coming up with. But you know, just the GPU that it's going to take, and what is it going to cost? And you know, the Google might decide. The fact that these are research papers, I mean, you mentioned that in the beginning, Chris, that, you know, these are papers, these are concepts, and everything is evolving for sure, but one of the things that I see is that there's also a race to publish right now. Publish and say, oh, you know, I've got this concept going, and now the embarrassing thing is that People are using AI to write some of these papers, and they're forgetting to take out <laughs> some of the, you know, oh AI. Oh my gosh, the prompts! Um, oh my gosh, yeah, that's great. I mean, Submitting so the papers. Totally oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> there's actually a, a website, that's and I great. don't remember what it is off the top of my head, that is now collecting you know, these AI prompts as they from scientific journals. Papers that are written. so you know it makes one wonder how much of this is real. Anyway, oh sorry, gosh. Chris. Right. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, so let's, let's go to the next subject. Yes, to the next subject, and from SEMA, we are going to our special friend. Let's call him Mr. Musk from X, or some people might still know that as Twitter, and he said or. He, he is uh, fighting for the freedom of speech, as he says. He's mentioned that several times, let's say. And he wanted to make a, a truth AI, I think he called that. And now it's, it has the name Grok. And this is a completely unlimited model. So this model has 314 billion parameters. When we think about other models like Llama, we have a 70 billion or a 7 billion. And this one has 314 billion parameters. 
and it is it's not restricted so all these things when you type in uh, prompts on chat gpt and it comes back with oh sorry i cannot do this because it could be harmful if i give you an answer to this question blah blah shouldn't happen with rock so now i haven't been able to test it yet because it's huge i couldn't run it locally somewhere and i did not find one hugging space for example um yeah where, where it, it it would be available for everyone some people try to set them up every time when i press load there it's not loading but i saw some people testing it and they did um videos about it the performance wasn't too bad it was also not fantastic but the big question is having a unrestricted ai model what do you guys think is that a good thing how would you use that Oh my goodness. The very first thing that I think of is just the headlines that are going to be generated from this stuff. And it seems like this is going to be the place to where people who want to do mischievous things to put on the internet, they are going to come to this as their new resource because it'll do anything they want it to do. So to yeah, me, but, that but, you know, makes that's... up for interesting. True. Uh... Sorry to interrupt you there, but it's just not true. Um, yeah, and the reason I say that is that Grok is part of the X second tier subscription or premium plus or whatever. So I never, you know, paid the extra five dollars or six dollars on top of what I paid just for access to Grok. But interestingly enough. I knew or know a whole bunch of people that were, wow, I can't wait for Grok because we're going to be able to say, you know, do, you know, whatever. And I actually asked them, like, what is the whatever that you would like to do with Grok? And they told me, and I'm not going to repeat it here in public, but, mm. you know, people were disappointed. They were very, very disappointed because, you know, as much as companies want to, you know, or must, my old homeboy, right, we both grew up in waterproof Pretoria, as much as they, you know, would like to say that they're encouraging free speech, there have to be boundaries because otherwise they're going to get sued. And, you know, the other thing about, this is that it's now released and you know that's great but my understanding is that to be able to run it takes an array of h100 cards and hundreds of gigabytes of ram so you know it's a gift to perhaps a large company that I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know. It's um, <laughs> sorry, 314 mm -hmm. billion parameters yeah. um, need mm -hmm. tons of memory, and um, sure, now it is available to the subscribers from X. But, but basically, the idea of Mr. Musk was to say it is open source. He is suing OpenAI because they are not open source. They are not open enough, and he mm. wanted to bring that to everyone by open sourcing it. But now it's so big that probably no one can run it. But you have to pay to use it mm. on his environment. Sure, because he has a lot of whatever kind of uh, um, technology running in the background to, to you know, for, for uh, memory and uh, also uh, power, <laughs> right? Of I, all these computers cost money. Sure. Yeah, I wonder if he uh, basically met with his team and said, how much computing power do we have if we were to put all of our systems together? And because he's got a lot of different companies. So I would wonder if that's what this equaled. And uh, he's like, yep, this is all of our resources and it just sounds great. Or is he building this from scratch or utilizing Artie? Uh, re just reallocating resources. I think that that would be interesting to know. Well, you know, if one digs down into it deep enough, there are rumors that I 
and do the research and as I say, our room is where um, Grok, how Grok was trained. Well, right. I mean, we, we cannot say too much about it at the moment. Um, but I, th I think it's it's worth to to keep an eye on that. I'm I'm quite interested to see what really people do with this unrestricted model in the end. If if that brings more power, if 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 that is really doing harm in the end, or if it's maybe to the better that, that people say, okay, I'm not getting all these prompts like or uh, feedbacks from from the AI model like, oh, I cannot do that. That might be, oh, this might be harmful. And I get this so often for very, very not harmful things, for very simple stuff. Um, but OK, I, I mean, mean um, I do think uh, in closing, I do think with Elon Musk's name attached to it and this being one of his new pet projects, I, I do believe this is not going to go any way anytime soon. And we will be talking about it once it's functioning. Yeah. So it, I it guess it functions today. Part of the X Premium Plus plan. <laughs> you can sign up for it today on X. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Your yeah. expectations, depending on what they are, will not be met, unfortunately. Uh, my opinion is that one needs to learn to prompt to, you know, you learn the machine, right? You learn what it objects to, what it you know, like, and how to coax it along. Uh, and that's why we continue to have these horror stories. Of right. You'll always okay. be able to do it. You know, <laughs> you, know you can jailbreak these things. I mean, the latest uh, one, um, just on a tangent here, sorry, is feeding it ASCII images. I haven't done it myself, but apparently it being a cat GPT throws a fit, but I think they tried it on a few other. But anyway, back to you, Chris, sorry. Yeah, sorry, it's hard because, John, you're breaking up a lot, and I don't know if you're ready or if you're finished or not, so at the moment it's uh, a little bit problematic. So from Grok, we go to the next Google development, and that is called Google Vlogger. And we, we saw quite some stuff of that in one of the last, I think the last episode, we had this um, Alibaba the company that's like Amazon in China, um, model called Emo, where you just had the photo of a head of a person and then say, sing this song. Uh, you had a music file, whatever, and then the uh, person started to sing with emotions in their face. And now we have something that is quite similar. We know these things already. Um, you just give vlogger an image of a person and then you can drive it. You will talk and this image starts talking. Um, that is really interesting. It's quite a life um, interpretation in my opinion. Well, I think it's uh, somehow a little bit like something like a live deep fake. What do you guys think? Wow. Yeah, no, this sure. is just, go. Yeah, go ahead, it, John. Go ahead. I mean, you know, one has to look at the training material, right? And another scuttlebutt rumor that's going on Laura is that they scraped YouTube. But anyway, you know, as far as um, blogger goes, Google basically created a data set called Mentor that contains 800,000 diverse identities, so you know, different people, and 2,200 hours of video. So, you know, the massive data set, and with all of that, 
you should be able to create you know, infinite numbers of expressions. The problem to me still, and you know, it's like um, you know, Pika has enabled voice sync right now, but all of these technologies are still kind of limping along in that, you know, you can see the lips talk and maybe there's some facial expression, but they don't blink. But for the most part, they also are separated from the background. So there's, you know, no arm, shoulder movement. That still needs to come. Yeah. Um, I think John is a little more pessimistic than me. I, I mean, when I see this stuff, all of these kind of things, I see it as it's it's a big like wow what what is going to be real and not real with what's coming down the pipeline of what we can create and yeah okay it's not perfect right now but it's going to be it's going to have the hands you know all of this stuff is learning that's why I just Sometimes I'm like asking you guys, well, how far away do you think this stuff is before it's really good? I mean, we look at YouTube. There is so much content there. And, you know, I remember when I first signed up for it, you're scrolling down to the bottom of a very long thing. And you're they're essentially owning your stuff when you put it on their on their platform for free. And I'm interested to how many percent of people actually make money out of all the it's got to be under under 10% for sure of the subscribers. I would be interested to see how many of them are making money. I think it might be more like a 3% um, that actually get a check from YouTube. It's most of these people are, you know, people are just donating their, their art out there to be consumed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this thing here is is basically uh, well, you're driving someone with your own voice. You're talking, and the, you will see that this other person, basically, or the that photo starts to to interpret what you say. I mean, it's it's uh, an it's a real time deep fake, in my opinion. Somehow, um, must not be a deep fake because it depends on what kind of image you use in the end, right? So it must not be a fake of uh, an actor or a politician, or whatever. But still, well, it has quality. Well, no, I mean, so one of the things that they are already talking about, Chris, is enabling actors, right? And I guess people that own the states of dead actors to, you mm. know, create a wow relicense them, them. That, yeah, oh my exactly. gosh I mean, yeah so, wow <laughs> yeah, that's bring, one of the things bring that, them yeah. like li literally re resurrect them from the dead you know it's like yeah you haven't been around but uh we're bringing you back right yeah and you, you can you really about that. just sorry chris um you know yesterday i was reading and i i can't remember but someone stupidly made the mistake of bringing back a couple of musicians that only recently died. Hmm. Pushback. Hmm. <laughs> you know, there's always gonna there's always gonna be pushback within these realms of like, you know, what if what if a musician did not release a song, but somebody owns the rights to these songs, and now they're going to make a music video, bring this person back to life, and oh, this person did this music video, even though they really didn't do it. Uh, it's going to be a very confusing world going forward into the future with the way things are going to be created and these possibilities. I mean, it's as somebody in the business, think... yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Using, I think, that, you know, copyright law and that needs to really speed with the technologies, which I'm, you know, trying to. Definitely, definitely. So now we are already at 30 minutes and we wanted still to talk about one other topic. And, uh, yeah, I guess that someone has to change now, basically because we want to talk about hand tracking. So um, 
Eric wanted to demonstrate a little bit about that. Um, that is not necessarily a pure AI topic, but it has to do with AI as well. And I mean, hand tracking is is getting uh, more and more uh, important, especially when you're using uh, virtual headsets. Um, I think a headset like the um, Apple Vision Pro doesn't work without hand tracking because you don't have a controller like with the Quest or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's um, always evolving. And yeah, I would I would hand it over to Mystery. I am magically uh, attempting to appear into the space, so I will be there very shortly. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, while he's doing that, you know, one of the interesting things is that Unity now has all Oculus toolkit, which, you know, gone way beyond anything out and once you install all of it, it looks like you've actually got you know an, an oculus version of unity but it allows you to do tracking ar and the whole number of things that took a long time and you had to make sure that android store and deleted and the list went on and if you didn't have any of those it wouldn't work and so they're making a big push for this able hand tracking in there you go here we are Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So there's such a technology from going from the desktop to then going into, you know, all right, I'm in this world now. And from an acting standpoint, once you can start incorporating your hands, like they've come out with all of this programming with the gesturing of how you're going to be able to move around and shortcuts. And I think it's pretty impressive. I mean, the controller, you had very limited movement with it, but with with acting and with what we're creating here in this world, I do really feel this is a huge step forward. You know, obviously the next step is, you know, everyone always wants more. Like, okay, you've given us the hands. When are we going to get the feet movement? And, you know, went to an event uh, last week that had, you know, this person had trackers on, and it was actually quite impressive from uh, when you start talking about a, a motion capture suit. As you can see, my character's moving around when I'm really not wanting to move, teleport around. So it does have some intuitiveness almost that you need to lock off. And then, I mean, they're still working it out, but I think it's pretty impressive, you know, when you really look at what you're able to do. No, it is. It's very impressive. And I think, you know, nobody wants to hold controllers in their hands. You know, luckily never thrown a controller at you know, the wall or a TV set or a window or something. You know, it's a hassle. I have had batteries fade out on me. So and I think, and of course, you know, to keep up with Apple, Meta has to you have controllers are going to be say obsolete. Yeah. Got to keep up. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this stuff, though, it's like who's really developing the technology, you know, with with the tracking and all that stuff, and who's licensing it to what company? I feel like uh, there's a lot of lines blurred. And look at that. That's 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 the hand tracking there, too. To how about going in to, like, crossing your fingers even, you know, like your hands like this. Like, to me, this is very good. So it's who's coming up with this to license this stuff out. I think that this is also just with, with all the technology that's going on. 
And the metaverse was the huge buzz a couple of years ago. Obviously, we are still here working in the metaverse because this is not going away. It's, it's yeah, all right, people couldn't quite figure it out just like they can't quite figure out AI, but – it's just evolving and keeping getting better to where it's like, again, I think it's like hitting that bar of like, okay, when is it going to get good enough to where now people go, oh, this is good enough. I want to be in this space. You know, how many people, you know, are buying these things? I talk to these people. They have a headset. They don't really come in and use it. So it's like the people who are making this stuff. You know, are they doing a poor job and failing because they're not creating? Experience? experiences that people want to engage in in their platform i feel like that could be where this is failing i don't know right so there are for sure lots of developments and um the usage of of hand tracking, my opinion, there is no doubt about it, is uh, is really really important for the uh, usage of virtual um, head mounted displays. Also for AR, uh, most of the time we're just talking about VR, but also for the AR headsets. I do, yeah. do not get the Apple Vision Pro to that. For me, it's a VR headset, or where people want that. But um, thinking about the uh, Hololens or things that will come in the future. Um, hand tracking, precise hand tracking is for sure a very important thing there. No doubt about that. Okay, so yeah, Agreed. we already run a little bit over time. And hopefully I'm gonna Close be able to be, you know, it's, for me, it's like, I look forward to being in the show. Like. You know, we're always battling technology here as well. You're asking, well, why did you just show up with a hand tracking now instead of like doing the whole show sitting behind the desk? We're still working with the technology because I'm like, this is how we need to be filming the show where I'm actually able to look at Chris when he's talking, look at John when he's talking and have that level of engagement really in, uh, in being here. But Good. I mean, well, a lot that's of powerful uh... technologies coming out, and uh, I look forward to continually exploring where they're going and what's going on. So that's my closing statement. Good mystery. Well, thank you. And this is the virtual film company on spatial.io. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at virtual film company. Like, comment, share. You know, Show us some love. We also have a Facebook page and a page on LinkedIn. Website is undergoing construction right now. Hopefully we'll have better news on that next time. We're here every two weeks. Have a great week, everyone. Cheers. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.